Welcome to the SKNAS Week in Review. In this program, we recap major government-related activities over the past week. Coming up, Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court launches e-litigation portal in St. Kitts and Nevis. Parliament recognizes this year's 25 most remarkable teams, outstanding males honored at award ceremony, and officials trained to implement vulnerability and capacity assessments in coastal communities. Those stories and more are next on the SKNIS Week in Review for the period November 15 to 21, 2019. Hello and welcome. The Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court officially launched its e-litigation portal in St. Kitts and Nevis on Monday at the Sir Lee Llewellyn Moore Judicial and Legal Services Complex. E-litigation streamlines the components of judicial processes covering areas such as electronic court filings, electronic case management, billing collection, and court scheduling. Users of the secure web-based service can access the e-litigation portal anywhere and at any time using a smart device. The court's Chief Justice, Her Ladyship, the Honorable Dame Janice Pereira, encouraged lawyers to make use of the service. Now sometimes, some of us, uh, we do not respond to change well. And that is not surprising because as human beings, we tend to be comfortable in our comfort zones. But change is both necessary and inevitable. Changing is how we grow, how we accomplish, how we remain relevant. Unless we change, we will become stagnant and we will be left behind. A training team from the Caribbean National Resources Institute conducted a training workshop to a local field team to assist with the implementation of vulnerability and capacity assessments in coastal areas and fishing communities. The three communities are Bastia and Old Road in St. Kitts and Newcastle in Nevis. The two-day training workshop was held at the NEMA headquarters. Director of the Department of Marine Resources, Mark Williams, commented on the significance of the training. In 2010, we did an assessment of the fisheries sector and we realized that uh, for the past decade prior, there was some variations in fish landing which we couldn't explain. We see that something is wrong and it is a result of um, climatic conditions. Members of Parliament paid tribute to 25 young people who are making significant contributions to the development of their communities and country, or who have made personal decisions to lead positive lives that can serve as a model for their peers. The 25 Most Remarkable Teen Award Ceremony was held in the Parliament Chambers on Thursday. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister Responsible for Youth, the Honorable Sean Richards, noted that the stories of the young people are typically very impactful, and this year, is no different. I must admit, however, that what, most remark that what is most remarkable about the teens whom we are here to celebrate is that many of them rose from the ashes of dire circumstances and surmounted varying degrees of personal difficulties to achieve this recognition. This, in all appearances, is an indication of their innate ability to harness their inner motivation and outward means to propel life forward in purposeful directions. Undeniably, it is a testament to the skills, ambition, autonomy, commitment, resolve, and resilience of our nation's youth. Issues related to setting and achieving career goals, the expected outcomes of Youth Month 2019, which of course is being celebrated in November, 
youth activism on environmental matters, and assistance for young people with mental health challenges were some of the matters raised at the third annual Minister's Youth Forum that was held on Wednesday. More than 130 persons between the ages of 12 and 29 years from St. Kitts and Nevis attended the interactive forum and were able to interact directly with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Youth, the Honorable Sean Richards. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Youth, Tom Buchanan, welcomed the participants and noted that the annual discussion is one that the government is proud to host as it serves to, quote, enlighten us all as we expound on the topics and issues that are relevant and important to society, end quote. This event is an indication that the Ministry, the Honorable Minister of Youth Empowerment, and the government recognize that our youth are capable of forming their own views and have the right to express them freely. That this is also an opportunity to engage the young people for ideas that will inform policy, program design, implementation, delivery and assessment on an ongoing basis. This is of critical importance to the ministry because we believe that effective youth policies come from conversations that are both horizontal or youth to youth as well as vertical are top-down and bottom-up in nature. Ten outstanding males and a corporate partner in St. Kitts and Nevis were recognized for their invaluable contributions to the development of the Twin Island Federation during an award ceremony held on Tuesday at the Ocean Terrace Inn. The ceremony was organized in recognition of International Men's Day which is celebrated annually on November 19 in many countries around the world. The names of the awardees and the areas that they were awarded in were Delwyn Delaney for Youth Development and Sports, Stuart Versailles for Agriculture, Dr. Ricardo Neal for Information and Communication Technology in Education, Lennox Warner, Construction, Pastor Peter Paul, who was awarded for Religion, Melvin Melly Hewlett, was recognized for culture and Stasio Williams recognized for ICT. The Centenarian Award was presented to Samuel Depeswar and Jose Rosa Santori received the Humanitarian Award. Now, Rams Trading Limited was recognized as the Company of the Year Award while Heston Ham received the prestigious Prime Minister's International Men's Day Award 2019. Minister responsible for Gender Affairs, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, said that the celebration stands as a reminder of the important role that men play in society. As we celebrate this wonderful day under the theme, Men Leading by Example, we consider the men in our federation. We consider them in their multiple roles as husbands, fathers, employees, citizens, and leaders, to name a few. It is in those roles, and many more, if we look closely, that we will see the finer qualities of men which shape and mold our present and future generation. Let us encourage men to lead by example and encourage our brothers to make positive contributions to our society. Let us all, therefore, make a difference in the lives of each other, men and boys, as we strive to achieve gender equality. Another international commemoration that was observed this week was Global Entrepreneurship Week. Minister responsible for Trade and Commerce, the Honorable Lindsay Grant, noted that the theme of the November 18 to 24 observance is GEW education, GEW ecosystems, and GEW inclusion. As we work to condense our entrepreneurship ecosystem in St. Kitts and Nevis, to make it a very well-oiled machine, we will continue to work with our national organizations in every sector to ensure that the silos are reduced and or removed. And finally, the United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization has partnered with the Department of Culture in St. Kitts, as well as other stakeholders in the Federation, to create a community-based inventory system 
to aid with cultural preservation. During the opening ceremony of the community-based inventory workshop held at the National ICT Center at the industrial site on Monday, UNESCO consultant Nigel Encalada said that countries are required to provide an inventory. And the inventory is a mechanism through which the state identifies the living heritage or the ICH within its territory and then can make, can assess its viability, can assess whether or not it is endangered and then can make decisions about how to assist communities and to work with communities to ensure that the living heritage does not expire or does not disappear. That's all for this edition of the SKNS Week in Review. I'm Ian Richards.